now. It says not streaming yet, but it's telling me to please wait. All right, yeah, we're streaming. We are streaming. Yes, we are. Let's just double check that it's popping up on YouTube. Pretty sure that it is. Yeah, we're good, brother. Go ahead. All right. Peace and blessings no. for James Anthony. And as we learn to move together, we define the concept of limitless. It's been a long time since I've jumped on. And that's because I've been super busy um, edifying within the word, within communities that are super focused on glorifying the name Yeshua. Who I have with me today is Abraham Ojeda from Overcome Babylon. When I found his channel, uh, it was just it was flooring to realize how much that I didn't even understand, how much that I didn't even know. And so today we're going to go through a few different things, right? So it's a privilege to have him on because he also um, has started a program called Kingdom Secrets Academy, where he goes through the interpretations and, and, and how to actually interpret the Bible, right? Like we've been led astray by so many different illusions that most mainstream churches are, are, just pointing us in the wrong direction. And so it's an honor and it's a privilege to have Abraham on with me. Uh, you know, let's just start with, you know, introduce yourself and kind of give us a little bit of testimony. Brother James, this is a beautiful day. Did you see <laughs> right outside as we're filming this, right? It looks like we're wearing sunglasses because we're both in a similar part of the country yeah. uh, of the U.S. And it, guys, it's dark right now because there's an eclipse, right? Yep. But anyway, I don't mean to get distracted. It's it's just like... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's happening right now, actually. And it's right. It, wow. It's wow. dark, bro. It's dark. So, guys, we are going live on a on an eclipse right now. Yes. And and what's cool is James wasn't even aware I was going to talk about this. But guys, we're going to I'm going to show you guys real quick today how I actually predicted the top of Bitcoin in 2021 using wow. eclipse cycles. And, and I'm going to show you the cycle that we're in right now and what to expect next. So I'm Abraham, brother James, it's an honor. Thank you so much. I, I always love hanging out with this brother right here, guys. This is a, a special brother <laughs> and uh, to me, you know, and as far as me, you know, I've been in this, I've been in this walk of trying to find out who God is what are his plans for my life yeah. from an early age, from 15, uh, 15, 16 is when I had that epiphany moment. Like, I think there's something greater than just this guy on a, on a pulpit on a stage with smoke and mirrors and, and music and at an emergent church in Nevada where I grew up. There's something more. I feel like there's a God that's speaking through this guy. I know he's whatever. He's got his problems. I understood that in an early age. And like, wow, I, th there's God and he's speaking to me through this dude on this stage. And that's really where it started for me, guys. I was just like, you know, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm just going to say, yes, Jesus, I want to have, I, I want you, whatever that looks like. And I wasn't perfect, but here we are, you know, 15 years old is when my journey started, 30 years, uh, 31 now, and, you know, all these years later, it has been a wild ride, a miraculous ride. I'm going to share some of the, some insights with you guys with prophecy today. Hopefully, Lord willing, we get to talk about prophecy and some beautiful things during this stream. And so I'm just excited to be here, man. Amen. 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 Let me just read through this description because it does a good job of kind of breaking down where we're at and what we're trying to do. In this, uh, in the, tr in the in intricate labyrinth of illusions meticulously woven into the depth of our subconscious minds, one finds a limitless expanse. While the benevolence of grace rescues us, we are summoned to transcend the ordinary, necessitating the relentless pursuit of righteousness. What does this endeavor truly entail? And where does one commence this profound journey? Furthermore, in the grand tapestry of biblical prophecy, where do we presently stand? And what are our ordained duties? Abraham Ojeda, a vigilant watchman for nearly two years, has been sounding the clarion call. Upon discovering his channel, I was astounded by the vast comprehension I had been neglecting regarding the practical expression of faith. We acknowledge our inherent perfections and the impossibility of adhering to the law in the conventional sense. However, we must recognize that the law has not been abolished. Rather, its fulfillment was achieved in a manner distinct from the metaphorical notion of being nailed to the cross. As we delve into Abraham's testimony, we seek edification and an update on the prevailing circumstances. 
May the presence of Yeshua guide us as we extend grace and peace to all souls embarked on this ardent quest for unwavering faith in the Supreme King of Kings, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I just, I love saying that, Yeshua HaMashiach, because it's such a different feeling to what I'm used to from like the mainstream ordinary churches. And, and, and it's a gift to have found, you know, the, the direction that you're pointing everyone. You're pointing everyone, not even to yourself, right? Like to Yeshua. And that's like the best part of what you're doing. You don't call yourself a prophet, but you did pretty good at uh, sounding that alarm for two, almost two years, right? September 22nd, you wanna start with some of that? Yeah, um, let, me, let me show you guys this. Maybe we can throw a link in the description. It's free to download, guys. Yeah, we'll this go. is what this is what makes basically what I do different from a lot of guys out there. Nobody makes a book that's 400 pages free. Everybody wants to make a dime. Everybody's trying to build their own kingdom. But I've been I published this book in May of this year. Everything in this book was already released on my podcast ever since April or March of 2022. And so it's ever since then I've been talking, guys something big is coming in september of 2023 something big is coming i don't know exactly what it is but i'm pretty sure it's going to be nuclear i'm pretty sure there's going to be war in israel i'm pretty sure you're going to be see some bad stuff happen i think we're going to start nuclear war september 22nd 2023 and the reason i came up with all these conclusions before we talk about that right james it's like well how did you end up being this guy on the internet that 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 had a count. I had a countdown timer on my website. I had a countdown timer at the bottom of my videos. Yeah. Countdown to September twenty second, twenty twenty three. How did I become that guy? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Let's start there. So what a lot of people, what a lot of people don't realize. I already told you guys. Yeah, you know, I, I, God has always been working on me, working in my life for a long time. Let's just fast forward to. Uh, I'm going to share screen though, if that's okay, brother. Yeah, of course. You should. You yeah. Should. So this this is my Twitter. Thank you, brother. So. This is my Twitter account. I don't really use it, but if you'll notice something at the bottom, it says Sig Crypto Sour, Crypto. So I, that's all I did, guys. <laughs> I joined in October 2021. I, I was always on crypto, doing crypto stuff. That's what I was really big into. I didn't have a Twitter or whatever, but anyway, I was always in crypto. I was part of a program, and that's why I was excited to jump on on uh, on Limitless here with you guys, with James, uh, uh, because. I was actually a part of this community. <laughs> this is like my, my claim to fame. Are you ready, guys? Like my, my claim to fame. <laughs> a Rocket Fuel Crypto with Robert Kiyosaki and Jeff Wang. They put together this program. That's Jeff Wang right there. I was literally, let me just, uh, let me see if it's still on here. I'm pretty sure it is. There it is. That's me. right. <laughs> but listen to this. Listen to this. Let me see if it loads. Hey, this is Abraham. Uh, you probably know me as Sig in the Telegram chat. And I just want to talk about Rocket Fuel, the course, and what Jeff's done, what he's put together is very valuable, okay? The, the skill of the learning the crypto world, how to trade, strategies for trading, it's a very valuable skill, okay? And what he's done with all the modules is just break down uh, concepts that are difficult to understand, and he just made it simple, okay? And that's what a good educator does. This is a good educational program for crypto. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, the telegram is really the sweet, the secret sauce um, that makes this program really, really uh, amazing because Jeff, you know, even though uh, I was involved in 2018 in Rocket Fuel and now I took a hiatus, came back in 2021. The okay. So that's what I, that's what I wanted to play from there. Actually. Wow, bro. That's pretty profound. I didn't know you were going to bust one of those out. That's pretty <laughs> stuff, huh? Dude, I totally forgot I was even on the, the website. Uh, until uh, we were, I was getting ready for, to talk with you, have a conversation. I was like, you know, people say that they're in crypto. Oh, I was in crypto. Everybody likes to say I'm in, I was in crypto. I was involved, guys. You know, you don't just end up on the website <laughs> landing page for one of the hottest educational programs. The, uh, Jeff Wang and those guys are making an over a over million dollars a year in subscriptions just for their, that program. Oh yeah, Robert Kiyosaki is, is no joke. I was part of a community just before I t started taking the Bible stuff really seriously. Um, and his whole model is based on Robert Kiyosaki's assets and liabilities concept. So small world, bro. Small, small world. world, small world. So I joined that community in 2018. I knew about, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna kick me. All, all the crypto people. I knew about 
one harmony one when it was like point zero 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 one cent and it went up to 10 20 cents this wow. last cycle in 2021 wow. i didn't invest properly i didn't hold i didn't hold on to that stuff right uh same thing with uh B uh binance coin i remember when binance coin was like three dollars <laughs> bnb you said a, so you you were saying something along the lines of you actually predicted the top of Bitcoin through biblical numerology. And, and okay, the- yeah, let, let's jump to that, brother. Absolutely, let's jump to that. So I want to I want to th- this is where it's going to get real deep. So when I the reason why people know me from Rocket Fuel <laughs> is because they remember me as Sig, the guy that uh uh he he a lot of people wrote, know me, dude. He predicted the top of Bitcoin, like he called that. So I'm going to show you guys how I did it, but more importantly, right? Because that's already in the past. That's that's over and done with. But I'm going to show you how we can apply the same principles to actually understand what's happening literally today with an annular solar eclipse outside my window. It's still happening right now. Right now, it's happening as we speak. It's pretty amazing that we're actually doing this during this. It's just, it's a gift. We didn't even plan this, bro. No. So if, <laughs> if <laughs> anyway, anybody who's watching right now, let, let's let's talk about this, okay? We're gonna talk about super cycle, but before I jump to that tab, let's just talk about this right here. Uh, uh, let's talk about there's these phenomenon that happen in the sky: total solar eclipses and total lunar eclipses. Total lunar eclipses are interesting because they're actually nicknamed blood moons. A total lunar eclipse is a blood moon. Total solar eclipses don't have a fancy title or nickname in my in my understanding, but what we're gonna talk about is a super cycle. So a super cycle is um, when you have a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse approximately two weeks apart from one another. And it doesn't have to be in an, a specific order. It could be a lunar eclipse first, then a solar eclipse or the other way around. OK, so that's what we're seeing right now, by the way. We're going to talk about that. Are you excited? I'm excited, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm beyond excited. In fact, what I'm doing right now in the background is I'm trying to get the, um, the thumbnail up while you're going through this. Yeah. OK, you got cool, man. So (laughs) thank you for that. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at for Bitcoin. This is how I was able to predict the 2021 Bitcoin top. Okay. What happened back then in 2021, I'm going to show you the charts in just a moment. We'll go back and take a trip down memory lane. In 2021 with Bitcoin, what's interesting is there was a lunar eclipse. It wasn't a total eclipse. It wasn't a blood moon, but it was a, a partial lunar eclipse that happened on November 19th. Then exactly 16 days later, on December 4th, there was a solar eclipse. This is what you call a super cycle. Remember, anything that's uh, uh, about, about two weeks apart, so lunar and solar eclipse, two weeks apart. So there was a super cycle that happened. Well, let's go take a look at what the charts look like. Um, this is from, uh, oh, what it, this is coin market cap, of course, but uh, the top of, of Bitcoin was approximately the 8th and 9th of November 2021. Wow. Remember, the cycle. The cycle began on the 16th um, and, and, and it was already dipping like crazy, right? Losing 5% a day, Bitcoin losing 5%. We're talking about a trillion dollar market cap, right? It was losing a ton of money every single day. People were just pulling out, dumping Bitcoin. And then of course here, by the time you get to December, we're going to talk about why that happened in December in just a moment, because there's some, you know, insiders knew what was coming with Evergrande. Remember Evergrande, brother? Oh yeah, that was a big deal. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk. We're, so we're taking a little trip down memory lane. It's necessary for us to do this so we can understand what's going on right now. So the reason I was able to predict this, guys, is because, again, when you understand super cycles, when you understand celestial cycles, this is the stuff that the the biggest manipulators of the stock market, you know, just put put in your secret society name, put in your you know famous last name that starts with an R and it rhymes with child, right? Put in the name. You know, all these people, all these big wig families know these cycles that the general population doesn't know. Oh, but yeah. the reason I was able to understand these things is because I understood the Bible. I understood biblical prophecy. I understood what, what it says in Luke 21, 25. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on earth distress among nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. This is talking about tribulation. This is talking about some other things. But I knew that the sun, moon and stars from the Genesis the book of Genesis is something that we pay attention to. Does that make sense, James? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so when we're looking at Bitcoin, again, let's let's take a, a little bit more of a zoomed in look at it. You can see where it is now. It's at twenty six thousand nine hundred dollars. At the peak, it was close. It was past sixty k. Yeah. So it, it. Yeah. 
and and right now the market cap is five half a billion it used to be a tr over a trillion the whole entire crypto space was two trillion and and this is what it looked like this is the monthly i'm pretty sure this is the monthly breakdown so in one month of november it lost uh 20 it just dumped and when when this happens to bitcoin obviously you know all the alts go to the trash can <laughs> Of course, that's because the whole market is led by is led by Bitcoin. I mean, that's how you know that that this whole process, there's so much manipulation happening. But you're right. Everything is done through moon and uh, solar cycles. So this is this is just a, a blessing for you to be kind of walking through this. Yeah, man. So <clears throat> again, the reason I was able to to forecast and I told a lot of people, I was like, guys, you might want to get out of the market in November. Just get the whole month of November. Just get out because what you do is, OK, I've already shown you this, right? Lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, 16 days apart for this cycle of Bitcoin 2021, the peak of Bitcoin. Everything was fine. Remember, everything's fine. Everything's just going to keep blowing up. There's yeah. a money printer. The money printer was going. Yeah, make her go. Boom. <laughs> Remember all the memes? Remember all those memes, dude? It's your own yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you had Pepe the Frog memes. And everybody's like, you know, put more money in, more money in. Nobody thought that it would ever end. Everybody was so high on the cocaine of never ending pump. Yeah, euphoria, no doubt. No doubt People were it. calling me an idiot. People were calling me stupid when I was like, guys, November, November. Seriously, I know we've had a good run, but just watch out. November, November. And it has to do with this right here. Okay, let me share my screen again. It has to do with this right here. Oh, where did it go? It's not this, but it's this right here. We calculate the intensity of the cycle. This is what I have on screen. Let me just read it. If the eclipses are total, each body takes on a value. So the sun and moon, each body takes a value of one. So your maximum is two for a value of intensity. But if the lunar eclipse is only 50%, then its value is 0.5. Any value less than 0.5 and greater than 0.25, .25, you may want to calculate. You may not want to calculate it. You may not. You may or may not. Below 0.25 has almost no significant effect. There are exceptions such as planetary alignments in conjunction with the eclipse, which happens. But in the event of a total lunar eclipse, 100%, it's, it's just different, okay? So in the event of a total eclipse, right, that's 100% intensity. We didn't have that back in those days in, in Bitcoin top. Let's just take a look at it real quick, okay? Just trip down memory lane. November 19, 2021, I have it right here on screen. The, the eclipse was visible in the Americas, Europe, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. So if we look at what this looks like here, uh, th this was the trajectory of it. And you can kind of look at the, it, it was partial and it wasn't as intense, but it had an effect. This is what I'm pointing out. We were supposed to be looking at that time at North America. Something is going to happen in North America or Asia. Something is going to happen that's going to remove confidence from the markets. We all saw it coming because the super cycle is so significant. It's not just any ordinary thing. It's not that common. We ha you have to pay attention to super cycles. If you want to understand macroeconomics, geopolitics, you have to be looking at these things, guys. You have to. Yes. Otherwise, you're always going to be guessing. Right, James? Does that make sense? Absolutely. And this is, this is just such a gift to understand this stuff right now, bro. Big time. Yeah, yeah man. And uh, I want to get more of your thoughts. I know I'm kind of monologuing here for a moment. No, but... no, go for it, please. please. <laughs> the stage, bro, because this is, I mean, this is a, a learning experience for me too. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, by the way. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so here in December 4th, right? Th that was only visible in South Africa, the South Atlantic, Antarctica. Let's take a look at it, okay? This is what it looked like back in 2021, that, that, that super cycle. And okay, well, it's just Antarctica. Okay, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe nothing major. Well, I already showed you the charts, guys. The charts don't lie. The charts are a reflection of psychology, right? We all know this, right? As I'm not chart, an investor. You, yeah, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news is really how it goes. People think it's the other way around, right? <laughs> you know, that's really that's really good, brother. Because look, if let's go back to the chart, a live chart. Uh, this I, I went back in time, right? So this is still November uh, 2019. The peak was the 8th ninth okay then it started dipping dipping well the super cycle wasn't until the 19th and then it ended on december 4th right well look at all the carnage that happened there on one day right you lost five percent it dipped. look it dipped all the way to forty two thousand dollars and then jumped back up from pan from uh, panic selling to trying to buy the dip and it bumped all the way back up several thousand dollars yeah that all happened on the super cycle but 
because because of the advanced knowledge of what a super cycle is here's here's what i'm going to say i'm going to stop sharing just so we can kind of focus in on this right the moon makes people go crazy mm-hmm. eclipses make people's minds go kind of nuts that's okay. why you, you talk to have you ever talked to a nurse or a first responder and they'll tell you yeah during full moons people get more car accidents and stabbings and shootings have you heard of that james absolutely and let me just kind of um add something to that how about this? I just learned because once you start going down this official truth rabbit hole, like the official truth, right? You start learning about parasites and how to cleanse your body and that these parasites are most active during full moon cycles, which is also the best time to cleanse and detox. But that's uh, another topic for another day. So can- no, but it ties right in, right? So, so certain, maybe even certain diseases and ailments and infirmities and illnesses pop up during moon cycles and stuff like that. Yeah. I know people that plant their gardens according to moon cycles. Like there's, you can get so granular and so detailed with this understanding. But when we're talking about geopolitics, macroeconomics and, and money and, and stocks and crypto, well, what happened during that super cycle that, that changed the game, right? Let me show you, let me show you. Let me jump over to uh, a, a four. I think this is Forbes. I think it might be Bloomberg. Is, Evergrande declared in default as huge restructuring looms. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. I remember that. Yes, yes, yes. This, yes. this was on December 9th, right? Remember the super cycle was from the 19th to the 4th. But mm-hmm. that's okay. How does that tie into today? Well, you got to look at the even the weeks before the cycle begins and even maybe a week after the cycle. And it's like, I, boom. Yeah, five days before, up to five days before and up to five days after. There's a guy on, on YouTube. His name is Waters Above Crypto. He does a good job of tying his charts to moon cycles. He also mentions the Shemitah. Is the Shemitah the singular to the Shabuwa? Shemitah is a, it's actually a Hebrew word that you find in Leviticus 25. It's only used in the Bible like a, a handful of times. It's hardly used, the word Shemitah in the Bible. Yeah. But it's it's a, a word that means release or cancellation of debts, basically. And that only happens on a 50th year of Jubilee. Jubilee, which is the first year of this of the next 49 year cycle. Yeah. And the and the word for that in Hebrew is Yobel. So it's so even that's different from Shemitah. Shemitah means like a release or cancellation of debts. Ten that, four. Ten four makes sense. Makes sense. So technically every seven years there's supposed to be a cancellation of debts. Um, um, uh, forgiveness of debts, I should say. 50th year is interesting because everybody comes back to their land. There's no more slavery. There's no more, everything's reset on a 50th. But every seven, there's supposed to be forgiveness of debts too. Um, So this year, obviously that's very important, right? 2023 to 2024 in the Hebrew calendar is a year of rest, of sabbatical year, a seventh year in in a cycle. So that is, yeah, that's absolutely something to be paying attention to, brother. Does that answer, help answer that question? What do you think? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so basically all of this stems from the Torah. Am I, am I mistaken? It, it, the foundation is always like, just like any house, right? We build our houses on foundations of solid concrete, rebar, reinforced, you know? And, and that Torah, that Torah scroll from Genesis, uh, uh, you know, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that's your, that's your, stem walls or the slab of the foundation of your house that you want to build it on then you go to the everything else new testament everything else follows after that yeah so why do you think that most mainstream churches don't even read the front of the book like why do you think that is do you think that they don't even know that they're captured i mean because everybody says the the law was nailed to the cross but that's not actually what the case is am i am i right well, yeah. So, you know, having grown up in not really grown up, but 15, 16, you know, you kind of feel like you grew up in it because I just went to so many church services. I used to do work for Billy Graham. I'm sorry, not Billy Graham. Uh, 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 one of his offshoots, Greg Laurie. And we would hand out New Testaments. And sometimes we'd only hand out Gospels of John's to new believers. So just the Gospel of John, just the New Testament. So I think it's a cultural thing where we feel like yeah, that that old book that's, you know, it's hard to understand. It's, you know, whatever. It's really old. Well, Jesus is here now. So really all you need is the gospel because that's what sets you free anyways. The law, all that is is a list of rules. Right. But, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's what convicts us technically, no? 
Yeah, I mean, how do you know what good is and what the standard of good is without having some sort of a law, a guidebook, rules, regulations to go off of? Correct. Amen. All right. I'm sorry for taking you off on a tangent. You were you were in the middle of explaining um, the whole uh, uh, tying it into the whole uh, crypto thing. And so yeah, how, man. How you got Let, here? Let's go back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Forbes. Remember, they were pumping the markets with money because of COVID. They're like, oh, you know, we're we're gonna go ahead and pump, 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 pump. But what happened? The first rate hike wasn't until the 17th of March. But before that, what also was making people nervous in November, December of that cycle was the Fed was saying, I think we're going to have to increase rates. Like we're getting a little nervous about it. And that was enough to ruin the market. OK, so with with now we kind of have a, a that was the kind of stuff that was going. There's more to it, but I don't want to drag on with with that because we need to talk about this. Yeah. Ooh. James, what do you think about this, man? What's happening right now? Yeah, <laughs> exactly what's happening right now. And but this, we didn't talk about this, but this is what I wanted to show you. I, I haven't talked to anyone about this before. Annular, annular solar eclipse, 14 days apart, super cycle. This is what you were explaining before. Oh my gosh, you know what? I, I, I've, heard some, I've heard some talking about the 28th, but I couldn't understand exactly what they were speaking about. Please, please enlighten me. So now we kind of have a foundation, right? We've seen what happens in the past. We're supposed to be looking maybe a week before the cycle, maybe a week after the cycle, but we're in a cycle right now, right? Again, that's why Jesus said that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's why he said, Genesis chapter one, the sun, moon, and stars are there for signs and seasons, for appointed times, right? Amen. This is so profound, man. What I'm about to, what I'm about to share here is so profound, dude. I haven't talked to anybody about this, but we have, <laughs> we we're, we literally were talking about, we just saw the annual or solar eclipse outside just now still where we happen. are still, still happening. Still, in the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. still happening. It's look it looks like it's brightening up a little bit, James. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think it's only because it's right in front of my window. Perhaps, perhaps I thought it was going to be like a, like a complete dark out, but I could be mistaken. I thought so too, because I'm just not an expert in this in this type of thing, but I pay attention enough to be able to see the patterns. Yeah, amen. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I mean, as, as all, uh, anyway, let's, let's talk about this. So we have October 14th, which is right now as we're live, 14 days apart, we have a super cycle. Okay. What, what's the significance? Break it down. Let's, let's jump over here. So October 14th is right now. Look where this thing's visible. Again, wherever the omen, the sign is visible, that's the countries that are that need to hear a message from God, man. Wow. So the message from God, I'm telling you guys right now, it's right here starting in Washington. All of North America can see it. It's just the greatest path is those red dotted lines that you see right there, the little circles. Oh, yeah. That's the greatest path. But to the left and right of that, you or up and down, however you want to look at it, you, all all those countries can see it so canada can see it south america you got brazil you know uruguay paraguay Ar argentina can even see it a whole bunch yeah. of countries it's supposed to end in brazil uh i think the last place to see it is supposed to be something about that that signifies a birth canal you know i'm not sure about that yeah i'm gonna post a video um attached to the description there's a guy that did a good job of tying a few different scriptures to it and how it directly ties to where we're at right now as far as um biblical prophecy i mean you you're doing an excellent job but i'm also going to add that in the description as well oh yeah i don't have everything figured out man absolutely it's good to have all those different uh is, yeah. i guess witnesses you yeah. know testifying so let's take a look at this this is what we're seeing right then we're jumping over here to lunar eclipses you, I've already shown you where the trajectory was for the solar eclipse that's literally happening right now, October 28th. So this is going to be visible in these different countries. Let's take a look at it on a map for a better view. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a partial. It's not a blood moon. It's just a partial lunar eclipse. But still, the intensities are there. It's important. We're already seeing Israel at war a week before this started, right? Before mm -hmm. the, the first solar eclipse. Oh, yeah. I've been talking about this for over a year. I didn't even know there was going to be a super cycle during this time. And 
the greatest visibility is right in the Middle East right there. That's where it's going to be most visible, this particular uh, lunar eclipse. Wow. So America is getting a warning, both north and south, and the Middle East is getting a warning. In two weeks, they're both getting omens saying, watch out. So, brother, speculate with me. What, 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 what do you think, man? I, I've never shared this with anybody. What can we expect, man? This is crazy. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Um, I don't think that you were off with your September 22nd date. Because if you, if you pay attention to Benjamin Netanyahu, he was on the 22nd breaking down the peace treaty between um, the Arab countries. Am, am, I, am I off with that? Yeah. Um, so basically... Yeah, he's saying peace, peace. And then we have all these signs. We have war in Israel. It's like that had to, it's a significant date. It just wasn't what I was looking for. You know what I mean? I think but that's that what I, somebody, somebody in the, in the Telegram community brought up the fact that it was technically set up. It doesn't necessarily mean that it came to pass. It just means that it is ready to go at this point. I mean, what comes next? If, if we were following exactly what we were thinking before what would be the next event to take place or roundabout now you're not a prophet we know this right <laughs> yeah nobody, of course nobody, nobody here's a prophet we're just watchers we're, we're watchmen we're just trying to understand right because it says in, in your book i love your book by the way it says Thanks, that um you know the prophecies were sealed up until the end time well we are at the end time and we've seen enough signs to know where we are exactly so what can we expect next this is a good question brother james you've seen you've seen my whole presentation uh, what i wanted to share with you so we all we can do is speculate right but uh, it looks like it looks like there is enough friction inside the gaza strip between palestine and israel and there's enough my goodness there are war crimes being committed against innocent people oh, in the Ga so, in gaza it's so horrendous i was gonna post something earlier but then i realized how brutal it was i had to say a prayer after i watched it with with some of those hostages from that concert i mean people are running around saying this is a sigh out. wake up y'all wake up no. you guys are no. so so, so captured mentally and subconsciously with all this Nasara to Sarah Q Psyop stuff. Right? Wake up. We are walking through biblical prophecy in real time. Okay. It's, this is a, this is a call to turn from the ways of this world. I mean, that's kind of why I haven't been focusing on these digital assets legitimately, because these are just tools. We should not be idolizing these things. And that's what we were doing. We were putting all of our faith into these things, okay, and praying we're going to be able to do this peace on earth. Well, guys, pay attention because it says in the end days for us not to be deceived. And it says it several times for us not to be deceived, okay? The evil one, when he rises, he's not going to be a red guy with horns and a pitchfork. He's going to be a charismatic, uh, uh, well-spoken, well-versed. He's been studying the Bible longer than any one of us have been alive, okay? Why do you think he's doing that? And I get a little passionate about this stuff because this is such a reality. And so many people are just busy building their Tower of Babel, just focused on themselves. You know, James, that I forgot to, to finish that story that I told you guys about crypto. Yeah. It didn't have a happy ending for me. <laughs> Check this out, man. I predict the top of Bitcoin. Do I take my own advice? See, this is where... I can't believe you did it, bro. I can't <laughs> believe that you did it, bro. Did you allow the, 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 the influence around you to convince you to stay after you told everybody to get out? Here's what happened. Here's what happened. <laughs> I knew I knew what I was doing, and I got I got greedy. So KuCoin allows you to you they used to they they don't I don't think they do it anymore because everything got super clamped down on regulatorily speaking, but KuCoin allowed you to leverage trade and i knew it was going to dip hard well i miscalculated some of those dips i got liquidated a few times and so what could have been walking away with tens of thousands of dollars which is a lot for me i almost hit six figures in the portfolio which for me Whoa. was a lot that's because 
That's because nice. for for what I put in, it was a lot. Now I did walk I did walk away with some profits, but man, come on now, I could have walked away with a ton of cash. You see what the coulda, shoulda, and what is are. If I start telling you about my coulda, shoulda, and what is, bro, I was close to a millionaire. Not to <laughs> okay? legitimately close. To <laughs> and now I'm just like I'm I'm pinching pennies to get the groceries. All right, <laughs> what's going on here? I'm trying to save, and I am leverage trading a little bit to try to get back up. But right. I'm not in the hands of the most high, man. Whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen at this point, and I'll do what I can with the gifts that come, all right? Amen. But see, man, that's the thing. You get you get, you get, get risky when you get confident. Yeah. And so I had been given a gift. I knew I was given a gift to interpret the Bible and to interpret omens, to interpret things that would happen in the future. I'm not saying I'm a prophet. I'm just saying I know I had been given that gift. My goodness, we were two weeks uh, my 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 forecast, my prediction was only two weeks off from seeing a hot war in Israel. I thought the hot war was going to start September 22nd. It happened on October 7th. I was only two weeks off, man. You can't get much Warn closer off. than that. Warn off. That was set up, man. And that's real, bro. Don't condemn yourself. Real talk. Don't, bro. Because that thing was set up. That thing was set up. And what comes next? I mean, most people are saying, oh, there's always war over there. It's just going to be right. the same thing. Don't worry about it. But, bro, the signs are there. The signs so, yeah. Yes, I was gonna say just to finish that thought, right, James? Don't misuse your gifts, guys. Don't don't misuse and abuse the gift you've been given from God for your own personal gain, because it will come back. You could be successful, but man, He usually hands you over to your sin, and you end up getting bruised out of the whole thing. All right, so just use, be a good steward of what He's given you, right, James? That's what I got to say about that. Profound, yeah. I'll second that because I I too was very irresponsible when I first came into what I came into. And I, I wasn't, I just wasn't taking into consideration, um, you know, how to be the best possible steward with what I was given. And although I pray about it now, I mean, my focus is solely Yeshua HaMashiach and everything else comes second to that. So by keeping my focus on the things above, everything else will be added to me. If it, it doesn't, if it's not added to me, that's my fault for messing it up in the first place. And I'm not gonna cry about it. I'm just going to take everything with a grain of salt and keep my focus on Yeshua. Yeah. And see, for me, like my heart was far. I was close to God, but I was far from him. I was like, I want to give you just these parts of me, but I don't want to give you these parts. And so that's why I was never able to experience that, that, that six figure success. And in your case, millionaire success, because we weren't, we weren't going all in. You, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. You got to make a choice. To not make a choice is to make a choice. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. What is he? What's what's the um, what's the scripture where it says you you can't serve both masters? You'll either hate one and despise the other, right? And it's, li a, it's literally talking about mammon too. Yeah, which is which is what it's money, right? Am I right? Well, mammon is actually like a pagan deity that that's associated with with mammon with money. Yeah, mammon is actually a Greek god. A wow. That's why in the deliverance manual that we cast that one out. That's a demon. Yeah, yeah it's, a, um, it's a demonic. Yeah. Just to talk about that for a hot second. <laughs> Go I, went for it. I went through a deliverance the other night with Brother Abraham. Mind you, this is two days now of not smoking. I used to, so I smoked for about 30 years. For the past four years since I got sober, I've been vaping, okay? And it was the, the hardest thing for me to have to let go of. I'm going, I'm going on now two days without that. And that's never been the case. Going through that deliverance, probably about an hour in, things just started melting off, man. They, they just started really just melting off of me. Whereas in the beginning, you you had to like, you had to have such a, a an oomph with everything you were casting out that, but the, by the end, it was just falling right off of me, bro. The freedom that comes with this is just, it's you can't even put words to it to explain the power that comes with walking in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, man. And neither you or I experienced that when we were distracted. You know what I'm saying? With with crypto or whatever it was. That's right. So, you know, praise God, we're we're out of that rut, that spiritual rut, you know what I'm saying? And so But we're on um, to what? Now, now we're into what comes next. Now our job is to be super watch uh, uh you know, watchmen and women, watchmen and women, and to sound the alarm, right? To point people back to Yeshua. That's basically 
the direction that we're going in. I mean, I don't have the gifts that Abraham does. He's so well versed and well spoken with as far as the Bible goes. He spends most of his time doing this, right? I'm learning how to do that now, but he's done a really good job. And that's kind of the main reason why we're here today to point you guys in the direction of Yeshua. I that's right, brother. You know, thank you for that. And you know, you'd be surprised what you can pick up in, in a month, two months, three months, a year. Um, you know, it says in the Bible that God gives us his Holy Spirit without measure. There's no limit to it. So in other words, it's limitless, right? right. <laughs> Shout and out to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, <laughs> seriously, go look up that verse. He does not give his Holy Spirit uh, by measure. He just gives it freely. So we just have to ask, continue to grow and walk and be diligent. I wanted to show you this. So to go back to the question you asked me, James, what do we expect next? Well, remember, the super cycle is from the 14th to the 28th. You see that highlighted? Yeah. When did a war in Israel broke out? Right here. It broke out right here. Days before that, all in the Come 50 year anniversary of Yom Kippur, bro. Wow. What are the chances of coincidence, guys? Come on. No such thing. FYI, guys, no such thing as a coincidence, okay? No such thing. <laughs> so we have a super cycle from the 14th to the 28th. Well, what do you think is going to happen afterwards? Back in 2021, Evergrande started defaulting. The, the Federal Reserve was saying, hey, we got to hike interest rates. We're thinking about it. We're thinking about it. Then they pulled the trigger. Putin invaded Ukraine a couple months later after that super cycle in 2021. What do you think is going to happen this time? Well, I'll tell you what, what they've been talking about for a long time. And now you don't even have to be any kind of a, a pro. I mean, the, it's written on the walls. This is going to be worse than what happened in 1939 or 29. This is going to be worse than that. But if you don't think that these elites have a plan set up and they're setting up their parallel system, and that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. A lot of people think, wow, oh, it's going to be heaven on earth. It's going to be Nisera, Jisera. Meanwhile, this is the segue to the beast system, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's written about, prophesied about thousands of years ago. People think that, you know, oh, uh, all, of the, all of these esoteric gods and goddesses, these are all, I mean, I, I can point you in a whole new direction with that stuff, but these are all fallen angels, all of these guys. Every one of them are fallen angels from a different lineage, right? So they are going to pervert and subvert everything that's in the Bible, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. That's where that all that esoteric stuff comes in. And I renounce and rebuke every aspect of that life, of, of, of that part of my life. I pray on a daily basis for forgiveness, for putting those things before the most high king of kings, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen, brother. Me too. And um, to just piggyback off what you just shared to start that off is, let me, let me show you something real quick. I'm trying to share my screen again. Yeah, go for it. But we did a video nine months ago. The, there were two total lunar eclipses in 2022, two total lunar eclipses. And both of them, one of them resulted in the crash of Terra Luna, which was the hottest. It was number three. Come on. Over 120 bucks or something like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. One, I think the market cap at the peak was over a hundred billion. Yeah. It was over a hundred billion. It's hard to even imagine now because it's worth nothing. So crazy. That crashed in uh, May, and then FTX crashed in November, and those were two blood moons. Two blood moons. Wow. And, and what I talk about in this video, like that's just my channel, right? But what I talk about is, oh, a CBDC is coming because both of those events were engineered on, yeah. blood, on blood moons. You great can see it. Context. That's great for context. Yeah, bro, keep talking about that, man, please. Well, you had Doquan, Terra Luna, with the stable coin, it was a stable coin scam, guys. It could not be, they couldn't peg it one-to-one -one with a dollar. It was algorithmic. Anything yeah. algorithmic always fails. We saw this with uh, that one that Mark Cuban invested in. I forgot, you know the name of that one, James? <laughs> Titan. I've never really followed any of what he's doing. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's just another one of us. He's a, he's a D-Gen trying to make his money. So I don't know what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, it was like Titan or t t something finance. Something finance with with iron or tight titanium or something i can't remember but yeah. that was an algorithmic stable coin any algorithmic stable coin has always failed and so but they kept the ponzi going and just the sequence of events around it it was very suspicious ftx don't even get me started with sam bankman fraud right fraud 
Come on, dude. He was giving money to, to political parties on both sides. He, his the FTX was was completely bankrupt. They didn't even have anything in it in reserves. They just people would put their money in and they would go do whatever they wanted with the money. And they were funding all kinds of black ops, man. There was there was donations. I probably can't even get into the stuff that they did here on YouTube. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the censorship still is pretty crazy. But yeah, that was it, it was a laundromat. It was a laundromat for the other side. But don't get it twisted. The, the right and the left are both two sides to the same bird. OK, they both are playing their position. And until us as folks start realizing black and white, up and down, left or right, red or blue, uh, trans, gay, the, the, none of this matters. None of this matters. These are just orchestrated concepts, constructs to keep us fighting each other instead of realizing who the real enemy is. Exactly, man. And I remember when FTX collapsed, it was like a, it was a blood moon. But what happened immediately after? What was the result? Oh, we need regulation. Oh, no more private cryptos. Oh, we need more regulation. Oh, everything was already scripted in that direction. So when when it happened, there was nobody surprised. Nobody's shocked by this. And Sam, he's SBF, Sam Bakeman fraud. He's just the, the fall guy yeah. for, for the plan. They used him and abused him because he, he went to his head. Probably he was disposable. We don't know all the details, but he was no longer useful. Singing like canaries, Caroline, whatever her name is. I, I just heard on, on X, the platform X, there's, uh, there's basically her testimony that just, started circulating two days ago yesterday and so you know the carries when they're out of the when the canaries are out of the cage they'll start singing that's a that's a fact and so when people don't want to go down they're going to because i don't believe every single one of them were in on it and i believe a lot of them were just you know dumb kids getting involved in stuff that they shouldn't have there are people who were orchestrating puppeteers in the background doing all of that and so what does that mean next well, I do believe XRP is right at the center of it all. I do. Wholeheartedly enough research, four years of research goes into saying XRP is right at the center. So what's your take on, on that? Because I'm, a, I'm at a point where I can't really, I can't walk away from any of this right now until I make right with, you know, my business partner, so to speak. And, and, and do the right thing with that integrity and compassion and all that. So what's your take on the biblical perspective uh, of, of that? You know, and I said it once, guys, go download this for free, right? Where, you know, hopefully James will put a link down there. I definitely get it, will. Get it for free. I talk about the role of the WEF, Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. I talk about the role in prophecy that you don't think, right? That there's not the Bible doesn't say anything about these guys. They're the biggest players on the world stage. Right. And so you go to their website, you go to the WEF website, you look at their partner section. Yeah, they got polka dot on there. Yeah, they got a few cryptos on there. But the one like like James, like what you're saying, XRP is the most suspicious, in my opinion. It's the most has the most lore behind it. It has the most following loyalty it has the capacity to be a world reserve currency it has everything going for it that polka dot and other things don't have all the hallmarks Absolutely. it has everything yeah so huh. I, I think they're going to use that as a replacement for swift if you don't know what swift is that's just the you know that's what they use in, in the north american currency and, and really other countries as well to move money around with swift it's their banking it's system monopoly. yeah it's their monopoly it's it's basically yeah. how they how they lock down all the gateways to uh to the banking to the central banking system and only allow the big boys to do what they do yeah that's what i spent the past few years of my life learning about all that stuff and and once you start going down those rabbit holes you kind of you learn some things that are just i mean it's just heart-wrenching some of the stuff happening in the world i mean so many of the illusions nothing is as it seems nothing but then when you're led back to the bible and i pray for forgiveness for saying that the bible was edited because I was in that camp at one point, right? And I know a lot of the truthers say that there's new books to the Bible that have been found and that, you know, it was edited. It's right, but there's some edits in there. The Bible is the inspired word of God with no errors and no contradictions. The only errors is man's interpretation. And you have figured out a really good formula. In fact, in fact I think I have it on my Twitter feed. I did like a three or four minute video breaking down those three steps and interpreting the Bible. 
right? Because we need to go back to basically the Hebrew language, which is the original language the Old Testament was written in. Am I right? Yeah. Um, uh, there's what's called the Septuagint, which is a translation of the Greek for both the Old Testament and New Testament. So it's like a whole Greek Bible. And pe some people hold the, the, the Septuagint like, hey, you got to go to the Septuagint. No, no, I go to the Masoretic Hebrew text. It's the original, oldest thing, most reliable thing, most fact-checked, most battle-tested and proven is the Hebrew Masoretic text. And then I go to the Textus Receptus. Uh, not the Alexandrian Egyptian text that has a lot of strange things inside of it, Brother James. I'm not sure if you're aware of, of the no. Alexandrian. Please t tell us. So most translations of the Bible these days have exploded from the Westcott and Hort Alexandrian Greek New Testament. It challenges the deity of Jesus Christ. It challenges his, his virgin birth. It challenges miracles. It says, oh, these, you can't find these miracles in original in this original manuscript, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Th that's a huge deception. It's been going on in the 1900s with Westcott and Hort. There's these two guys, Englishmen, that found this old, they're, they're like, you know, dumpster diving in the Middle East. They're like, you know, we want to look, find a new Bible and, and become famous. <laughs> we want to find a new Bible. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm just, I'm just showing you the intention. That, that's what I see. Oh, yeah. let's, let's become famous. We want to become known as scholars and make money. This oh, was found in the cave, right? The Q thing. Oh, no, no. Well, this was found in a library in Alexandria, Egypt. Oh. And like, oh, we found this old manuscript. It's so old. It's been here since like 1100. So it's old. Wow. But see, people have this idea that old means better. That's yeah. not true. Old, a lot of times when you're talking about manuscripts, just means that it's neglected and no one wanted to use it. So it never had fingers on it. It never had oil stains. No one ever used it. Ah. <laughs> and so it's just been around for a while. But right. the Texas, the Texas Receptus was circulated like newspapers hot off the press. Oh, get the Texas Receptus. You got the letter of John. You got the letter, this letter, this letter. And so the Texas Receptus, there's not an old copy per se, like the Alexandrian Egypt manuscript of the New Testament. But it's it's what's been circulated and that it's proven. It has all the words of God because there's so many copies of it. Yeah. Battle tested. Battle tested. Yeah. So sorry, I know that's a little bit more of a tangent, but you got oh, the Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, Masoretic Hebrew text, Texas Receptus. That's it, man. Gold standard. Gold standard. It took me a while to figure that out, too. So when it comes to interpreting the the word, what 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 are those three um laws that you that you've come up with um that you put inside the uh the manual? I could probably pull it up here. So yeah, man. So uh, law of first mention. Yes, there you go. Law of definitions, law of context. And so you, you use these three principles and you'll never go wrong, man. You're always going to get to the bottom of it. You're always going to get, because when you go to the original language, let's say we were talking about the Hebrew Masoretic, then you're going to see what people have interpreted into English and you're going to see where the inconsistencies are. But you're going to be able to see past the veil of human interpretation by just going to the original and there's tools online. You don't have to be an expert in Hebrew. I don't, I'm not an expert in Hebrew. I just know enough to, to get, you know, business done. But you basically uh, use a tool like blueletterbible.org and you can just do keyword that. searches. I'll throw that in the description, Joe. Yeah, and you can find all the original Hebrew and Greek and then you can bounce it off of what people have interpreted it to mean. Perhaps, oftentimes, not oftentimes, but more often than than then I, you know, people would probably care to admit you find the true meaning rather than what people have interpreted it to mean. There's a few things that you've been able to uncover. Like there's a difference, right? Like following the, the letter of the Lord opposed to following the doctrines of men. And it's referenced in the Bible as well. There's a lot of people like say, like, okay, we could talk about 43,000, 44,000 plus denominations and like 13,000 or 14,000 plus versions of the Bible. How does somebody who's just coming out of Babylon, so to speak, right? And they're thirsty for that knowledge. They're, they're hungry for the word of God. What do they do? How, like, what's their first step? First step, man. And, and you can never go wrong. Always pray. So you, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave you guys uh, orphans when I'm going to send you the comforter. 
And the Comforter's job, he's going to teach you all things that I have taught you. He's going to bring it all to your remembrance. You're going to remember all the things because of the Holy Spirit. So ask if you don't know whether or not you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, whether you've had the Holy Spirit of fire and power, ask and you shall receive. Trust me. Ask and you shall receive. Say, hey, Jesus, Yeshua, in his Hebrew name, Yeshua, I want to make you Lord of my life. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I'm in this thing for real. A simple prayer like that. Can you show me? Can you just give me a sign? Prove it to me by baptizing me with the Holy Spirit, anointing me, giving me the comforter, teaching me which way I need to go. Show me what, how to serve you and follow you. A prayer like that with a humble heart that's sincere, that's where, that's where this thing works every time. You're humble never going to go wrong. Heart. You're right. Humble heart is the key word because you're not asking the Lord to, to prove that he's real. That's not what you're asking. If you're unsure if you've been baptized and ministered to by the Holy Spirit, ask with sincere intentions and a humble heart and things begin to change. I mean, that's what's happened for me. And I'm sure Abraham can testify to that as well. It's just things begin to change, like your likes, your dislikes, your wants, your desires, everything begins to change for you. And so for me personally, it was a matter of just an, an, an earnest uh, um, yearning to want to be obedient in every way possible. And that's kind of what led me on this journey to find your channel and then go from there. Once I was baptized, I mean, I just wanted to learn and it's difficult to comprehend the Bible without the right context. And you have to put the work in, in order to find that. And like he's saying, let's, I, I want, you know what I want to touch on real quick is the, um, is the rapture stuff. <laughs> sure, we'll, talk about that. I, I know, I know there's a lot of people that think we're waiting for a rapture and, and you get this complacent kind of, uh, it's not much that you have to do, but just hold the fort down. And we believe that's false. We believe that's false. Abraham, you want to kind of expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So um, it's really, it's really easy to explain actually. It all has to do with the um, the Lord's Supper. You remember the Lord's Supper? It's the last night before he's crucified. He's having dinner with all his disciples. You got Judas Iscariot that's going to betray him. You got the, all that stuff happening, right? Yeah. And he, you know, he took the bread and he said, "Hey, you know, do this in remembrance of me." Um, he said, "This is the key right here." Let me let me just pull it up, brother. I might as well. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just pull it up. Uh, Luke twenty-two. Boom. He took the cup after supper saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, right? That, that He was quoting something when he said that, okay? And so what a lot of people say these days is like, oh, I'm a new covenant Christian. I'm a new covenant church. I mean, the, the new covenant, the old covenant's done away with. It's dead, nailed to the cross. I don't want nothing to do with the old covenant. Well, <clears throat> this is where if you just understand what what he why he's saying that why does that make any sense did he come up with it out of thin air did he just make this up you know what i mean and we have to understand the context why he used those words he could have said a lot of other things he could have said a lot of, of other things um but he chose to quote the prophet jeremiah and it's specifically jeremiah 31 it says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. He's quoting it verbatim, okay? With the house of Christians, Gentiles. It doesn't say that, okay? It doesn't say that. With the New Testament, New Covenant church. No, it doesn't say that. So you have to understand who the people of the Bible are and who you are. When you call upon the name of Jesus or Yeshua, Jesucristo, Jesu, it doesn't matter what the language is. When you call upon the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you say, I'm tired of my sin, rebellion, of a hopeless, empty life, and I want to come into this new covenant, you got you to gotta understand that you're an Israelite. You're no longer just a, a Gentile, but you become part of a new nation a united kingdom of Israel that's consists of two houses in the Old Testament, a north and a south, but it's becoming a united kingdom, spiritually speaking. And we are now in a new covenant 
And it literally says, what's the covenant all about? Well, I'm going to put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be my God. They shall be my people. This is the covenant that God desires to have with all of us, each and every single one of us, that we walk in a marriage contract with him that makes sense. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so incredible when you, when you, when you break it down that simply why. And yeah, it's, it's right there. It's right there for us to see. But we've we've kind of leaned on the pastor, right, to, to kind of guide us in the direction. And this is a personal walk. This is a this is a, a a daily personal communion with Yeshua that you're after. You're not after checking your church box every week, even if you go three days or four days a week, even if you go every day. That church is not what saves you. It's the communion with Yeshua on a daily basis. It's practical application of walking this thing out. Yep. Yep. And so going back to the rapture, James, just to finish that thought is, well, there's no rapture for why, why is this something that's only a, it's a Latin word. Uh, rapture is a Latin word. It's not even found in your English Bible. Harpazo in the Greek. It's not even, the word rapture is not found in the Bible. So why do we have this idea of end times doctrine where a bunch of people disappear in the millions, they just disappear and they escape judgment. There's no such thing that's ever written for Israelites, which you are. There's no church of Gentiles. There's no, but even, even if you misinterpret the Bible to look at the church, the rapture, you have to make it stretch. You have to, you have to use verses that are not meant to be used in certain ways to make it all fit. But what the Bible really prophesies is that he's going to gather his elect, gather the remnant from the four corners of the face of the earth out of judgment, out of captivity. He's going to give him protection, bring him back into the land of Israel, the promised land. And there's going to be peace on earth after the judgment is over. But they're going to have to go through. Most people will have to go through the judgment. There is a small group of people called the 144,000 that don't have to go through the judgment. They're protected by, from the locusts. They have the mark of God on their forehead. That's a specific group of people. But everybody else, make no mistake, when the bombs start going off and World War III becomes fully nuclear, probably this month, probably this month, which is why I've made such a big deal about these things. Right, James? Yeah. <sighs> just remember that we're all, we all kind of have to go through it. It's just the way it is. It's just the way that it is. So we can pray. We can pray to be um, to be saved and, and kept from that power of judgment right but technically we're all going to go through that and so i believe personally my my personal conviction is that what's happening right now especially within your community um people are just coming together people that have that fire and that yearning to want to learn and to want to be obedient and so the remnant church is is beginning to rise and i believe you know, I don't want to be arrogant because that's just, you know, with a humble heart, I believe that, that that we are part of that remnant. Maybe first fruits, I don't know. I don't know, right? But I know that we are part of that remnant. And, and you could sense that. That's all we do. Everybody's lifting each other up and praying for each other and the deliverance, the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it is such a, an incredible thing that's going on within that community. It can't be explained other than the miracle of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man, we, we get to see <laughs> we get to see a lot of interesting miracles every week, don't we, brother? Amen. Um, you really do. You really do. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, just just this morning I was on deliverance call, man. It was pure fire. Oh, my goodness. It was one of the most powerful calls that I've ever been a part of. Just helping someone be set free of some demonic stuff that they were dealing with in their life they couldn't seem to shake loose of some some addictions boom man that's just beautiful yeah when i saw that in the group man i was just i it, it almost brought an emotion to me man because i know that feeling i just went through it a few days ago like yeah 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 just incredible man it's it's really incredible but that's the gift of what's happening right now so we see what's going on in israel and we see all of this that's the that's the judgment beginning that's those who are being disobedient to the God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were seeing his judgment come to fruition. And so there's two sides of the coin. You see all that darkness and all that evil, but at the same time, you see these miraculous things happening. 
right? And that's why we're called not to be deceived because there's going to be some people coming in to play here, perhaps in the month of December, right? Like that's something we were talking about just recently. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too, too in, in depth in that, but it makes sense to see the evil one show up around that time. I right? guess yeah. those holidays are pagan, satanic. The most wonderful time of the year, right? Pretty crazy. Yeah, well, so I, I want to mention something too, James. You just reminded me with the Gaza. I was going to say the Gaza Strip. Just watch out for um, people to go crazy, lose their minds over what's going on there, the the war crimes being committed, and that's going to provoke Iran into a nuclear confrontation with Israel. So I think the next thing to look out for is something that promotes a nuclear confrontation of, uh, of Iran and Israel. It could be a false flag or something, uh, whatever. Wow. Well, that, those things are real, right? False flags are real, but the blood and the suffering, that's all real too. So the false flag is real. These things are orchestrated, but that's the hand of, of Yahweh moving in people's lives. And you that's don't it. have to be good with him. You don't have to be good with him, aligned with him. He can use anyone he wants whenever he wants to fulfill his word yeah man so keep keep an eye on the dome of the rock watch out for the dome of the rock the al-aqsa mosque right there in the temple mount and everything in jerusalem if there's some kind of because everybody reveres that that as holy sites the muslim world the jewish world the christian world everybody looks at those things like holy sites so if something were to happen to compromise destroy or or desecrate those places you bet you there's going to be some people that are going to be beyond human reasoning of being angry and they're going to go crazy with nuclear confrontation. Watch out for it. What does it say? Amen. Yeah. Um, what does it say in the Bible? Uh, if this timeline is pretty accurate and it has been up to this point. So what does it say? Like, what does nuclear look like? Or are, are we thinking something like globally? locusts yeah. armies uh nucleus fallout like what does that what does that look like you think you know let me see if i can f find it you know i'd rather i'd rather show you than just tell you if that's yeah, okay please please do yeah it's gonna be right here brother let me let me just show uh that's a really good question too a solid question it says that so this is what I've been talking about. We, I guess we should have given this a little bit more context at the beginning, yeah. but I've been talking about the abomination of desolation to appear in Israel, in Jerusalem on September 22nd, 2023. I've been talking about that for over a year. Mm -hmm. When we see it, which we have not seen it yet, which I believe this is a nuclear device of some sort in Jerusalem. That's what it means by holy place. It just means holy city, in my opinion. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's just Jerusalem with the abomination. It says there's going to be great tribulation in Matthew 24, 21. To answer your question, there is going to be great tribulation such has not been since the beginning of this world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. There's never going to be anything like this. And it, if we thought destruction of the entire world under a flood, Noah's flood in Genesis chapter 6, if we thought that was bad, this is worse. And I believe the only scenario that fits that description that we've literally seen the world stage set perfectly for is nuclear war with Russia, China, Iran, and everyone else, North Korea, ganging up on the West. And there's going to be maybe a back and forth. Maybe it's going to be limited. Maybe it's going to be full scale. I don't know. But it's going to be worse than flood. Flood waters on the entire face of the earth. And so it says, it says something along the lines of... Um then the lawless one will rise and, and basically will, will, will be the mediator, the great mediator to kind of put everybody at bay and make sure that everybody's peace and safety, no? That's, that's, that's how this looks like it's going to work out perfectly, right? In the pages of our Bible, that's pretty much what we're going to see probably. It's like, and the smoke in the aftermath of bombs going off left and right, everybody hating each other and going crazy and ballistic, literally ballistic on each other. Then you got some sort of alien, otherworldly, other dimensionally presence saying, hey, let me show you some miracles. I'm a Messiah. I'm here to 
restore peace, law and order. Oh, by the way, take a mark on your right hand or your forehead. Oh, by the way, you're only allowed to use XRP. And 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 not for nothing, guys. When you start when you start digging in on what they're doing behind the scenes, uh, their their investment arm, the different biometric chips and identity kind of concepts. It's exactly what they're doing. It's exactly what they're doing. And that's why it's like so crucial for us to understand if we are going to be in this space, if we're going to continue to be in this space, we need to take the blinders off and approach these things from an unbiased perspective, knowing what's really coming. So this way we can be ready uh, to be used by our creator. Right? He can he can move in our life and use us for his glory. Uh, and, and, and basically, we could be the instruments to facilitate his things left and right, up or down, whatever it may be. But the only way that's going to happen is if, you know, we're paying attention and we're leaning in. Yeah, man. What what uh, Yeshua said in John chapter nine, verse four is I must works the work. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming when no one can work mm -hmm. so the night is coming when nobody's going to be able to work and and be blessed in the work of god so this is a call to action we have a limited time window where we can just shine and experience blessings that uh the prophets of the bible so many people have been looking for this for 2600 years or more mm -hmm. people have been looking like there's going to be a redemption of mankind. There's going to be peace on earth. There's going to be prophecies fulfilled. There's all this cool stuff that's going to happen. There's all this judgment that's going to happen too. People have been waiting for this moment for centuries and we're finally here. And it is an opportunity right now. While it's still daytime and night hasn't come yet, well, we can do some business for God, man. We can reap some blessings and be just eternally treasure in heaven, man. Treasure in heaven forever. Spiritual banking, baby. Spiritual banking is what we call it because we're not we're not focused on the things of this world. Yes, we could use the tools of this world, right? But we're focused on the things above. That's it, brother. On the things above. What a gift, man. What a gift yeah. it is to be alive and, and awake at this moment exactly in time, right? Like this is just a gift, man. Truly. Yeah. Yep. Well, Brother James, I'm, I'm going to be going live here in about a couple hours. Yeah. Um, oh, and right. I, what's what's yeah. cool is I have I have some uh, I might have some interviews lined up on my channel today. So I don't know. I have to go figure all that kind of stuff out. Um, uh, but man, I don't know if you have any other questions for me, brother. But no, we're good. Uh, we, can, we can sign off. Just why don't you just uh, I'll, I'll start a prayer and then you can finish us off. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we come to you in the grants. Um, that we are just, we are eternally grateful to have been called out of Babylon. We are sinners saved by grace, walking by faith, and we are eternally grateful to have been called upon and fashioned for this exact moment. We pray grace and peace to everyone who's watching, to your families as well, and that you guys continue to take the blinders off and, and, and lean in with everything that you have so that you too can, can begin being a facilitator, being a facilitator for the kingdom, right? Being an ambassador and a facilitator for the kingdom's glory. All glory is yours, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua. 100%. 100% agreement. 100%. Amen. Uh, let the spirit and the bride arrive in our lives. <laughs> let us be a part of the bride and let the spirit of God rest on us. I pray, Father, that you would help us to listen to your voice. Help us to hear. Help us to hear your voice. Yes. And discern when it's you and discern when it's not you is demonic or it's a distraction mm -hmm. and help us to walk in fire and power. Mm -hmm. And I just pray that you would set us apart for your honor and glory during this short window of time mm -hmm. while it is still day that we can experience you. And you said, seek me, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And I pray that we would call upon you with everything that we've got, mm -hmm. not holding back any longer. But walking into the fullness of life, the fullness of, of, of bodily health, the fullness of finances, the fullness of peace, the fullness to be able to rest my head on my pillow and not have demonic dreams and torments and, and sick thoughts and, and weird things happening and poltergeists. Let us have the fullness of your power and your fire, Father God. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned. Abraham's going to be going live in a little while uh, to do his, his, his weekly Sabbath um, breakdown. And uh, come join. I'm going to drop all the links in the description, Kingdom Secrets Academy. Uh, just come join. Come join. Get involved. Get active. It's been an honor and a pleasure rocking with you, Abraham. We'll do this again. Shabbat shalom, everyone. See you soon. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it.